big Wednesday show for you. A lot of trade talk today. How about two buy lows and two sell highs at every single position? We, of course, are going to be doing some fantasy regulating later in the show, and we will preview the Eagles and the Packers. This really good Packers defense so far, they've allowed the second fewest points in football. Only the Patriots have allowed fewer. How will the Eagles do in this game? We also got to talk about some Wayne Gallman fab alert. It is Wednesday, so of course that means... The Heath is on. What's up, Heath? Thank you, Adam, for that nice introduction. It's good to talk to you. I haven't talked to you since Sunday night when we had a, such a nice conversation. We had a... Yeah, you know, we, we had an argument about Daniel Jones on that show. I imagine today we'll be arguing about Wayne Gallman. Uh, also, it's Wednesday, so... <laughs> But Ben Gretsch is on. <laughs> What's up, Ben? There it is. Benny and the Jets. Uh, Benny and the Gretsch. Well. Benny and the Gretsch. I, I got great. a little bit of, uh, I, I got some Jets to talk about when we do our buy lows. So. Oh, good. It's perfect. Oh, two, you have two Jets, don't you? As buy lows. Yeah, you do. Two Jets. That's That's a lot of Jets. Okay. Uh, did you know that Aaron Rodgers, guys, as I was previewing this game, Aaron Rodgers is on pace for 496 pass attempts. That would be his lowest in a, in a full season. It would be 101 fewer than last season. They have run the 10th fewest plays in the NFL. And I noticed we don't all have him as like a top five quarterback. Nobody has him as a top five quarterback this week. Dave, Jamie, and Heath doing the rankings. Uh, yeah, so you could sit there and do the narrative. Hey, you just had three tough matchups. Things are going to get better. They're going to go off this week. But looking at the pass attempts, 31 per game, that's nothing. Uh, how big of a concern is that for you, Heath? It's partially a concern, and it's partially a concern because Aaron Rodgers, really over the last two years, two seasons that he's actually played football, has not been the type of quarterback that would be wildly successful with low pass attempts. He hasn't been as good as Russell Wilson has been on a per attempt basis. You look at it, I mean, even going back to 2015, before 2015, he was very consistently over eight yards per pass attempt. Since 2015, that's 2,100 pass attempts. He's averaged 7.1 yards per attempt. Now, a couple of those years were salvaged by a very high touchdown rate. But yeah, the volume's a concern. This is... This is a prove-it week for me for Aaron Rodgers as a fantasy quarterback. I mean, the Packers are doing great. Everything's working with the new offensive system. But if Rodgers is not a top-five guy this week against an Eagles defense that is beat up and not very good in the first place against the pass, uh, I'm, I'm going to have serious concerns, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if people start dropping him for weekly streamers. Oh, dropping him. Wow, how about that? Uh, ben, give me your quick thought on, on Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I think as we get into the buy lows and sell highs, one thing that we'll have to keep in mind and and probably be discussing a lot is that we've only seen three games. And so the way those games have played out matters. I mean, you can look at season stats and you can pace out the season, but all it takes is one kind of wonky game. And in Rogers case, he's played against three good pass defenses. They've won all three games. They haven't really needed to throw in any kind of comeback mode yet. They will. They're not going to go 16-0. and uh, So, yeah, I, I mean, I agree almost entirely with, with what he said, but I also think his pass attempts are down in, in large part because they had a, a, a close, low-scoring win against the Bears and a close win against the Vikings and a close win against the Broncos that didn't really ne necessitate him throwing in the second half. Yeah, I just was surprised to see Aaron Rodgers 7th for Jamie, 11th for Dave, and 12th for Heath. And there are a lot of guys you could start over him this week. And we'll talk about this game later. But it's just like, if you can't start Aaron Rodgers at home against the Eagles, how well, comfortable are you going to be? Yeah, go ahead. We all have him in the top 12. No one's saying you can't yeah, start him. Yeah, but, but you drafted him as a top 5 quarterback. So it's just... That like, looks I like get, a mistake right now. Right now it does, but but we knew the schedule was brutal. I mean, if every team in the NFL had to play the Bears, Vikings, and Falcon and uh, Broncos, their quarterbacks would be struggling almost in every case. So, well, we'll you know, we'll, I, I guess we'll see what happens. I, I would it be is interested. a big week. I, I would be interested. Like, I'm trying to think about it now, and I'm I'm not going to come up with the answer on the fly, but maybe you guys will. Has like, how have the other quarterbacks done against the Bears compared to Aaron Rodgers? 200 yards and one touchdown or against the Vikings compared to his 209 yards and two touchdowns or against tell you about the, the Lions. Vikings. 
The, well, I can tell you about the Vikings. It, was, but, it wasn't the Lions. But the, the Broncos. I mean, that's the, not the Vikings, an Apple's app. That's not no, apples to apples yeah. comparison anyway, because the Vikings lost that game and they've dominated both weeks one and three. So I mean, you right. can you can share those stats, but it's it's not a I don't think that's a very good comparison with the Vikings. The Vikings gave up garbage time production to to Matt Ryan, who was having a terrible game, and then he threw two late touchdown yep. passes. And the same exact thing happened with with Derek Carr, who threw had garbage time production, but he only finished with like 17 fantasy points or something like that. Uh, and then the other teams, you know, I'm off the top of my head. I mean, the Bears, Derek Carr was a lot better games. against the Broncos than Rodgers was, right? In terms of fantasy points, yeah, maybe. All right, look, let's t- we'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's do a fab alert. Wayne Gallman went for eighty four. <laughs> he went for eighty four dollars out of a hundred bucks in our fourteen team podcast league, and thirteen dollars out of a hundred bucks in our ten team podcast league. So a huge difference there. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it to Ben. Ben, if you were going to like if you were. I didn't have you on the waiver wire show yesterday. So, how much out of a hundred dollars do you think Wayne Gallman should have been worth yesterday? I mean, it de- totally depends on your situation. If you're not, if you're in a situation where you need a starting running back, you're not going to get a much better situation than this. They don't even have another running back on the roster. They have Elijah Penny was their third back, and he trans- uh, switched over to fullback in the preseason. Gallman played every snap after Saquon Barkley left. They're going to bring someone in. Uh, they've worked out a few kind of uninspiring names, but we should expect that Gallman's going to play a pretty huge workload over the next several weeks. So if you need a running back, I think you got to go out there and get him now. Eighty-four dollars, yeah, that's that's a that's a big number. Uh, but much. I do think we over we overreact a little bit to high bids early in the season because part of it is like this is the time of the year when everyone has money, and you if you need a guy, you have to outbid people. Later in the year, each dollar is is essentially less valuable because there's fewer people that are actually still bidding because there's so many teams that are out of it and there's there's fewer options really i mean oh the other thing i was gonna say is everyone has less in their budget anyway uh you can get guys for pretty cheap later in the year i i think saving all your budget is typically a kind of a bad move but yeah 84 is too much i would probably be in the like 40 percent range if you really need him uh i think i put a bid out in a league where i needed him one of our one of our CBS leagues that was in the low 30s, but I've already spent. I think that's that two QB league where I where I bid like 50 percent on Gardner Minshew back in the day, back back after week one. So I don't have a ton left, but um, I bid almost all of what I had left on Gallman, and I didn't get him. And I thought he, I, I didn't think I would get him, frankly. And but then in another league where I didn't need a running back, and I had pretty good options, I didn't even put a bid on him because I didn't I didn't necessarily need to get him. I don't think he's an amazing option. It just really depends on whether you need him or not. He's basically like a low, uh, low end RB two probably just based on volume. He's kind of an uninspiring option. He's not someone that I uh, really want. But if you need a back and you're especially if you're zero and three or one and two, yeah, you can bid this much if you have to. Okay, and I think that's helpful for people because Wayne Gallman. Some some people haven't run their fab yet. So 84 out of 100, you're pretty much leaving yourself with no wiggle room and getting an RB, you know, a low end RB2 perhaps, um, who's not even. It's not like Barkley's out for the season, so that's too much. But 40 something like that, that's not necessarily too much depending on your situation. Uh, we have a Facebook giveaway. Uh, we are asking you who you're basically holding <clears throat> a grudge against, who you won't draft because you're holding a grudge against based on previous seasons. Le'Veon Bell is a great example of that. So go to our Facebook group. Call Fantasy Football today. Join the group. Tell your friends. Get on there. Get some advice from the listeners. Get some, some advice from Ben Schrager, our podcast producer. I'm on there. I do a Q&A every, every week. Um, it's just it's a great group. So join it. And uh, make sure you're watching CBS Sports HQ. Fantasy Football Today airs noon Eastern, Monday through Friday, and 10 a.m. Eastern on Sunday. And if you miss one of the Monday through Friday episodes, you can go to HQ later in the evening and you can watch it. You know, you just download the HQ app on your Roku, on your Amazon, on your Apple TV, your Amazon Fire, whatever, on your connected device. Download the CBS Sports HQ app. You can watch fantasy football today. All right, buy low, sell high. Let's start with a buy low. I asked you guys for one at each position. Ben, you can start with the buy lows at quarterback. Who's your quarterback? Yeah, it's Jared Goff, and it's a it's ultimately a pretty similar case to what I just made with Aaron Rodgers. He's always had a little bit of a, a home road split. He's already played two games on the road, and then his home game against New Orleans, Drew Brees got injured. He hasn't really had to throw yet. They're 3-0. and 
Um, I, you know, I, I, the offensive line's a little bit of an issue and I do have some small concerns, but I've seen him dropped in some leagues. He's a cheap quarterback. You can acquire if you need to, I still think he has plenty of upside. And he has a really good schedule coming up. So Tampa Bay, they got to turn it around this week, Jared Goff. All right, Heath, how about you? Who's your buy low quarterback? Not sure. I love Carson Wentz on a short week at green Bay. Uh, without his full complement of wide receivers. But after this week, Wentz is someone I'll be looking to buy low on. He really struggled when everybody was out. He was okay last week. Week two was pretty bad. I think the perception on him has dropped a little bit. I still expect he's going to be a top five quarterback over the rest of the year. He's on pace, Heath, for a career high in pass attempts, 629 pass attempts. But it, but how do you feel, well, how do you feel about this? Sorry. I, yeah, yeah. That, that's the thing. I don't know if he actually is because is, is that only because he's on pace to play 16 games? Uh, yeah, but I don't think no. But I think I looked it up. I don't think he's ever thrown this much per game. I wouldn't have made that silly of a mistake. I don't think I would have anyway. But but well, what do you think about this for Wentz? Green Bay this week, the Jets next week should be good. But then you've got at Minnesota, at Dallas, at Buffalo, Chicago, a bye, and then the Patriots. So that's Minnesota, who's 13th against quarterbacks, but I don't buy it. They're better than that. Dallas is 6th. Buffalo's 5th. Chicago is 8th, and I think they're, they might be better than that. A bye, they're the best. And then the Patriots, they're first right now. Are you scared of the Wentz schedule? I'm not. Like, I don't factor in schedule quite as much as I think you or Dave or Jamie do. And I really think there are generally three, maybe four matchups in each direction that matter each year. The, the Bears are definitely one of those matchups. It's possible a couple of those other teams are as well. I don't really believe the Cowboys are. So, no, that doesn't scare me too much. All right. Cowboys have played soft offenses. They're not a. a that's just like you said, you might not buy Minnesota's 13th ranking. You shouldn't buy Dallas's sixth, it's too high. All right, running back by Lowe's. Oh, it's one of the b- 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 Ben Gretch's Jets. What do you got, Ben? Yeah, I got Le'Veon Bell. Uh, you know, I've already made cases for some of the cheaper guys like Miles Sanders and Royce Freeman in the last couple of weeks. I'm still looking at those guys. But Bell is a guy who has played 100% of the snaps at a t- in two of the three weeks to start the season. I was definitely wrong on him in the preseason, thinking he might rotate a little bit more. Huge receiving role. The biggest thing that's going against him right now is the Jets' offense has been really bad, but they should get Sam Darnold back in Week 5. You can buy him now. Although he's going into a buy, especially if the Le'Veon Bell owner is 1-2 and two or 0-3. Oh uh, you can make a little bit of a low ball offer and try to acquire him right now, and you should expect the Jets to be better once Sam Darnold's back. They had a good preseason. I still think they have upside. I think it's, what, 20 catches in three games for Le'Veon Bell? Right. That's terrific. And... Um... Yeah, certainly in PPR. So good time going into a bye week, a desperate owner, an 0-3 or a 1-2 Le'Veon Bell owner. You know, rip that guy off, rip that guy or that girl off. Heath, you know, I was, I was, I said this on the Friday show. I hope, I, I was so upset that Leonard Fournette had that big, long, like 70, 69-yard run because that would have made him a much better buy low. But you still have Leonard Fournette, who's on pace for 75 catches, by the way, as a buy low. Yeah, it would have been much easier to buy low on him without that run, right. or maybe a little bit easier. Listen, he's still just the 17th running back in PPR leagues despite having 14 catches already this season. I love the way they're using him. I'm not concerned about what Gardner Minshew is going to do this Jacksonville offense. They're going to be just fine. Another guy who may not have a great week this week, it might be better to buy low after Denver, though I'm not 100% sold on the Denver defense yet either. So I, I expect still Fournette, top 10 running back with top 5 upside. Would you rather have Fournette or Gurley? Fournette by a fairly good margin. Ben? Yeah, I'm, I'd take Fournette too. I'm worried about Gurley. Would you rather have Marlon Mack or Fournette? Fournette. Def, definitely Fournette in PPR. Probably Fournette in both, yeah. All right. Let's go to the wide receivers. Ben, a Packer. Who are you buying low on? Yeah, Devontae Adams, I mean, I think everyone's going to be talking about him this week, but he's had three really tough matchups to start the season. He actually performed pretty well against Xavier Rhodes in Minnesota in Week 2. Back in Week 1, he was going up against the Bears. They were triple-teaming him at times. There was one time the camera caught him like pointing at the three defenders that were on him. Last week, he got a lot of Chris Harris, who's uh, just an absolute elite cornerback. So you don't usually see uh, a wide receiver have to face such difficult matchups for the first three games of the season. It might be the case that the Devontae Adams uh, owner in your league is very aware of that, but if he's not, he's a guy that you should absolutely be buying low on. 
uh, especially because not a lot of other Packers receivers have stepped up. Jimmy Graham's banged up. Geronimo Allison has had some drops issues. Marcus Valdez Scantlin's been okay. But I think when Adams gets in some better uh, matchups starting this week against Philadelphia, that Rodgers is going to start to just completely pepper him like we saw him do uh, last year and in, in, in the last couple seasons. And I, and I have some confirmation bias on this one just because my main concern for Adams coming into this year was that he would not see the enormous target share that he did last year because they had a new offensive system. I anticipated Matt LaFleur would want to spread the ball around more than what the Packers did. And so, listen, I don't I don't disagree with buying low on Adams based on what he has done so far this season, but I also didn't have him ranked as a top 5 wide receiver coming into the year, so I'm not like I'm going to be careful with how I'm buying low on him. On separate shows Sunday and Monday, I said that I would take Adams over Evans rest of season. But I then said on Monday that I would not take Adams over Keenan Allen rest of season. So I think Keenan Allen with his target share and his production, I think it's, I think he's fine to move ahead of, of uh, Devonte Adams. Do you guys agree with that take? How would you rank those three wide receivers? I would take Adams over uh, both. I think I, and I, I had concerns coming in too, but I don't think we should be overreacting. I, I'm, I'm with Heath. I didn't have him in my top five. I think I had him wide receiver six, uh, but mostly that was because that top tier was really elite coming into the season. I, I, I have not dropped Adams down substantially uh, because of what's happened in the first three weeks. I expected him to have a slow start. So it's important to not overreact when you have that expectation. I actually, like I said, thought he was impressive to have in a 100-yard game against Minnesota. Um, so, yeah, I would have him over Keenan Allen and Mike Evans. Yeah, I would definitely take Allen over Adams in PPR for sure. Evans is really, really tough for me because I'm not sure. Like it, that was awesome what he just did, but how are we going to feel if Tampa Bay goes to face the Rams and the Rams defense continues to be as good as it's been and just kind of shuts them down? Yeah. How are we going to feel about Evans having one good game out of his first four? I'm a little bit iffy on him, so I'll take Adams over Evans still, but I'll take Keenan over Adams. Who is your buy low wide receiver, Heath? Uh, it's Robert Woods, and I think if uh, Ben actually put in the notes that if you didn't want him to talk about Adams, he would talk about Robert Woods. Even with the increased targets for Cooper Cup, I'm not sure it even matters to Robert Woods. That mostly hasn't come out of Woods' target share. And we saw last year three game stretches where one receiver would dominate targets and then the next week it would be someone different. But what has happened is Cooper Cup has seen his average depth of target shrink because he is taking a lot of the targets that were going to the running backs. They threw the ball 18% of the time to their running backs last year, even more than that in 2017. So far this season, Below 10% of their targets have gone to the running backs. If that continues to be the case, Cooper Cup can be a top five wide receiver, and Robert Woods and Brandon Cooks can still be top 15. Yeah, okay, and Woods and lost, a, Woods yeah, lost a touchdown to a penalty in week two, as well as th uh, two more receptions to penalties in week two. Some of his stats are a little banged up just because of uh, because of losing some, some plays to penalties. So I totally agree. Woods was better last year with Cup on the field than after Cup got injured. That's just another note. I mean, I, I think he'll be fine. All right, and then my buy low wide receiver I mentioned on uh, Monday's show, Odell Beckham, he's on pace for 160 targets. As long as he's getting targets, he can overcome mediocre quarterback play and a bad offensive line. He has proven that over and over again. So you have to pay up for Beckham, but I still think he's really awesome. Uh, tight ends, Ben, uh, wow, you're just all over it with the Jets. Yeah, another Jet. I mean, it's hard to find any tight end that you'd call a buy low. <laughs> it's hard to find a, any tight end you call a buy, uh, a buy low because anyone who's, you know, a lot of these guys that are not producing are, are not guys that I necessarily want to be buying into. But uh, Chris Herndon, look, Adam Gase is doing the thing he did in Miami where he's playing all of his skill position players over 90% of the snaps. Ryan Griffin, their current tight end, has been playing over 90% of the snaps every game. So has Robbie Anderson. So has Jameson Crowder. So has Le'Veon Bell. And Quincy and Nunwa did in week one before he went on IR. I fully expect when Chris Herndon comes back, he's going to be a, a full, complete full-time player. And there's just not enough good tight ends. He's going to be running plenty of routes. Uh, and I think the offense will, will have to be better with Sam Darnold. So he's a guy that I'm really keeping my eye on because of the way that Griffin's been used. He might not get used 90% of the snaps the first game he's back. I fully expect in the second half that he's going to be playing so many snaps that he could be like the second half, uh, not necessarily Mark Mark uh, Andrews or Darren Waller, but uh, the second half tight end out of nowhere guy who's very productive for you. Yeah, and I'll, I'll, go, right, with, 
I'll go with George right. Kittle. Um, he still has a 25% target share in the San Francisco offense. That's just been weird. They've gotten off to a 3-0 and start and haven't thrown the ball very much. He's already seen seven targets in the red zone, had at least two touchdowns called back because of penalty. If anybody is even slightly concerned about Kittle, I still expect he's going to be a top three tight end the rest of the season. I would very happily go trade Darren Waller, Mark Andrews, and something else for Kittle. Kittle's yards per catch is down from 15.6 to 9.7. Remember, he had a lot of yards after the catch last year. Where do you think it will normalize to? Like 12-ish? 12, yeah. Yeah. I think right. like Kelsey's right, usually right around 12, 12 and a half. That, that's a good number. Mm-hmm. All right. My concern for Kittle was like, uh, it, you know, not like not recent concern, not preseason concern, because I like Kittle. Was are they just throwing the ball to too many guys? But as Heath mentioned, he is still getting 25% of the target share. So that's a really good sign. And um, yeah, good things ahead for Kittle. Uh, I just made my first FanDuel lineup of the week. Not an easy week for running backs, in my opinion. Um, you know, a lot of guys have tough matchups. You obviously don't have Saquon Barkley or Le'Veon Bell this week. Dalvin Cook has the Bears. Uh, Todd Gurley, the Bucks have actually been pretty good against the run, so I don't know if I want to go with him. But I do think Devontae Freeman is a must-play. But really what's so fun about this is I get to have Daniel Jones. I think Daniel Jones is very good value on FanDuel. So if you want to be a crazy homer and get all your favorite players on your team and you can't do it in your redraft leagues, Go to FanDuel. If you haven't signed up for FanDuel, it's FanDuel.com slash FFT. Make a $20 deposit at FanDuel.com slash FFT. Get $5 in site credit uh, once a week for four weeks. That's FanDuel.com slash FFT. And if you want to join our league, we have a weekly contest. FanDuel.com slash league slash FFT. So two URLs. Pretty easy to remember there. Start winning some money. Go on FanDuel. Start making some lineups. Super fun. You're going to love it. FanDuel.com slash FFT. Make a $20 deposit. Get $5 in site credit for four weeks. And that's FanDuel.com slash FFT, or you can download the FanDuel app. Before we get into the sell highs, we got to do some news and notes. Dallas Goddard and Alshon Jeffrey are expected to play. T.Y. Hilton does not know if he will play. Saquon Barkley is getting a second opinion on his ankle, but we're going to stick to the four- to eight-week timetable for now. Um, C.J. Anderson worked out for Houston. And, you know... Do you, what do you make of that, uh, Ben? Like, with Duke Johnson's role being phased out, and they're looking at a running back here. What do you make of that for Houston? Yeah, I mean Johnson's role's basically already been phased out. He's he's now become the same guy he was in Cleveland. It's a, a very kind of a bummer bummer development, I would say. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think if they if they add Anderson, it makes. You know, Hyde, it puts Hyde on watch. They they don't think that Hyde's the guy for their early down work. But then I think Anderson would be, it would resurrect his value quite a bit because he would potentially get all those early down plays. Yeah, but but Johnson is, it's just about another bad note for Johnson. And we're already seeing plenty of bad ones. He's borderline droppable at this point. Does it? I mean, look, I don't think anyone here loves C.J. Anderson. But he does it make sense to stash C.J. Anderson thinking he might end up somewhere? Maybe they're just all it needs is one more running back injury and somebody could sign CJ Anderson. There's too many things. Like it's going to be the Giants. Yeah, you got to be in a really deep league to be playing that type of three dimensional chess. All right, uh, a lot of uninspiring running backs worked out for the Giants yesterday, so that's why I think Wayne Gallman seems to have some job security. David Njoku's not going to have wrist surgery, but he's out at least seven more games. Washington expects Jordan Reed to, to return this season. Cam Newton, meanwhile, has a list Frank injury. That's according to the Athletic. How droppable Heath is Cam Newton? Um, pretty droppable, really. Like, I, it seems like the most likely return would be like week eight at the earliest. Now, um, I, I'd put him at a six on the dropometer. T- thank you, Terry McLaurin is the first player in NFL history to record five receptions and catch a touchdown in each of his first three games. So that's cool. The Steelers acquired tight end Nick Vanette from Seattle for a 2020 fifth round pick as Vance McDonald has a shoulder strain and McDonald's 76% owned. But Ben, I, this didn't make any sense to me because there was a report that it wasn't so serious. You're going to give up a fifth round pick if Vance McDonald doesn't have a serious injury. That's kind of confusing. And then how much does this help Will Disley? Yeah, I, I don't really understand it from Pittsburgh's side. I, I've actually seen people go out and pick up Nick Vanette now. Don't do that. He's not going to He's not going to do much at all. Uh, it's huge for Will Disley, though. They've been splitting the routes almost right down the middle between Disley and Vanette. 
They won't, those are the only two roster uh, tight ends on the roster. Disley's obviously been obviously been way more productive, but his route share has been right around like 50%. It's going to jump up. They're going to activate uh, Jacob Hollister off the uh, off the practice squad, and he'll he'll run some routes as well. But you'd expect Disley if he was running right around 50%. I don't have the exact number, but I was looking at game by game last week, uh, uh, just yesterday, and and it's essentially right around 50% in each game. If he jumps from around that 50% range to about 75% of routes per drop back, that's going to be huge for him with, with how productive he's already been. So he's definitely a good ad. I'm pretty mad that you got him in one of our leagues for 18 bucks this week. I had 16 bucks on him in a league where I had Vance <laughs> McDonald. Yeah, I had uh, Vernon Davis, a tight end. So I needed Will Disley, and yeah, I got him for $18 out of 100 And uh, that was our two-quarterback league. Uh, any updates, or I guess, how many of these guys, Heath, do you expect to play this week as of right now? Devin Singletary, Deshaun McCoy, and Damian Williams, Rashad Penny, and Ito Smith. The only one we're currently projecting to play is LaShawn McCoy. And Daryl Williams, I went back and I looked at the game log. Daryl Williams had 14 touches, over 100 yards, nine carries for 62 yards, five for 47. But it, after LaShawn McCoy caught a touchdown late in the third quarter, about two minutes left in the third quarter, at that point it was uh, 30 to 12, 30 to 13. That was his last play. Baltimore scored on the next possession, made it 30 to 19. Then Daryl Williams had five catches, for, uh, five carries for 49 yards and one catch for 16 yards. So through three quarters, he had four carries for 13 yards, but he did have four catches. Uh, I guess I just wanted to point that out. He only had four touches in the first half. Most of Daryl Williams' carries came after LaShawn McCoy was removed from the game. So I guess we can talk about that as we get later on into the week, but just thought I'd put that in perspective. And final note. Heath said on Twitter yesterday that he wants to punch me in the face. So I just thought that was a little mean, but you said I want to punch you in the face. And I, you know, I, I hope you never get that opportunity. That feeling is returning. <laughs> or, or right now? Just what bring I it, like I just thought about what it is that you were talking about. And we're not going to talk about it. We're not going to talk no, about we, it. No, we... He's no. just having a little problem because his his Kansas no, Jayhawks are don't. huge cheaters. I'm not going They're to talk about it. They're just huge cheaters, and you can't just go punching people in the face because you get called Wait, out for are, cheating. Who are the cheaters? I missed this. Kansas Jayhawks. Bill Self. He's a huge cheater. Like what else can you say? Dude cheats. Uh, let's sell high. Sell high the Jayhawks because <laughs> they're going out. There, there is some tough times are ahead. Uh, quarterback uh, Heath, who's your sell high? Uh, it's touchdown Tom. Tom Brady, currently the number five quarterback in fantasy, and uh, there may be some some tough times ahead starting with this week against the Buffalo Bills. We know what generally happens to this Patriots offense when the weather gets cold and what they start doing running the football. Um, I think that he could still be a low-end starter most weeks, maybe not this week, but I don't expect him to be a difference maker at quarterback, and so if one of these QB desperate teams still does, I would absolutely be looking to sell him. Would you trade him for golf? Oh, yeah. All right. Ben, who's your sell high? Yeah, another position that I thought was really tough to pick one because there's just not a lot of quarterbacks that are doing great that, that I want to sell. Russell Wilson had a monster game last week. I'll say him if you can get a, a good return. Obviously, it's it's price dependent. But through 50 passes, through three, uh, through three and a half quarters, he had only thrown uh, 13 passes. And that's so consistent with everything the Seahawks do and try to do. Even though they were way behind, they're being so very slow-paced. Late third quarter, he gets eight uh, pass attempts on their last drive of the third quarter. And then in the fourth quarter, he throws 29 times. At the end of the third, they're down 27-7. They've run 21 uh, rush attempts, and they've thrown 21 times. He throws 29 passes in the fourth for over 200 yards, rushes for two touchdowns in the fourth, throws for a touchdown in the fourth. He's going to have more games like this because Seattle's frankly not that great uh, where he has to throw late, but it's just how conservative this offense is. The, the fact that he's coming off a game where he threw 50 times for 400 yards, two touchdowns, and ran for more than 50 yards and two more on the ground, I think makes him a, a, a sell high at that point. Would you sell him? Would you rather have uh, Russell Wilson or Lamar Jackson? Jackson. Heath, how about you? Yep, still Jackson, although I wouldn't be selling Wilson yet. Again, kind of the reverse of what I said about Carson Wentz. Let's let's sell him after he plays the Arizona Cardinals. Sure. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good point. point. Uh, that's this week, obviously. Okay, Heath, running back to sell. 
Uh, Philip Lindsay just scored two touchdowns, and people may think that uh, what he did in 2018 is coming back with that 5.4 yards per carry. I do not. I still expect this to be a timeshare that's pretty close to 50-50. I wouldn't be supply- surprised if Royce Freeman eventually takes over a larger share of the workload and Lindsay handles more of the third down stuff. So if you can get a top 20 running back for him, I'm selling. And Ben. Yeah, I put Mark Ingram down. It's A lot of that's just touchdowns. I mean, I, I've been wrong on him so far. I told you guys not to draft him in the preseason. Uh, but he does only have six catches through three games, which was a big concern coming from the Saints, who throw to the running back a ton, to a team with a scrambling quarterback. And scrambling quarterbacks typically scramble rather than check down to the running back. Six catches through three games is not going to get it done in PPR leagues. In, in non-PPR, obviously, it's less of a concern. I also don't think he's going to be able to rush for as much efficiency throughout the year as he has so far. And then five touchdowns through three games. He's, I don't think he's going to score 20 touchdowns. So uh, he, he's just a sell high based on current rushing production and the lack of receiving role. Yeah, but he's he's Derrick Henry, you know, every time. It's the same argument, right? Except I think yep. I like Ingram. I think I like Ingram better than Henry because I like the Ravens offense better than the Titans offense. And so if you're hoping just for touchdowns, you know, that's kind of where I'd lean. How would you guys? Yeah, it goes, do you guys think? It goes back to the, the high value touches I've talked about a ton. And you're right. Both those guys are the the trap backs. They, they, they get too many uh, low value touches compared to their overall touch count. They're still going to have splash weeks. I think for both of those guys, they've had a good three-week stretch, and they're going to be worse the rest of the season. So I think they're both sell highs. Who would you rather have, Henry or Ingram? In- Ingram, for the reasons you said, I think I, I would agree. Uh, their offense is better. Yeah, Wide I receivers. I think Ingram. Oh, okay, sorry, Heath. Your your uh, opinion matters. Don't punch no, me No, apparently face. it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> who, who are you selling high on, Heath? Uh, Demarcus Robinson or Nicole Hardman. I will sell high on either one of the uh, Chiefs wide receivers that are scoring a touchdown every four targets. I just don't like I fully expect that as long as Sammy Watkins is getting as many targets as Robinson and Hardman combined, he's eventually going to be the best option. And then Tyreek Hill is going to come back and Travis Kelsey is going to score touchdowns. And if I could get a starter of some sort for Robinson or Hardman at any position, I would do it. Uh, give me like one guy that you think you would try to sell Demarcus Robinson for. I can't imagine you're going to get too much for him. Uh, people know he has a shelf life, but would you take would you like Alshon Jeffrey? I, I uh, would you would you take him for Hardman or for uh, for Robinson or Hardman? I really I think I would. I would. I'm not I would, much yeah. of a Alpha Alshon guy, but yeah, I I, I probably would. I know that's um, why I asked I, you. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, can I, face. can I aim for somebody like John Brown instead? Yeah, sure. If you want, of course, you know, I'll show might be better than it, but, uh, how about, uh, Ben, <laughs> who's your, who's your sell high? Oh, I'll, I know it's there. the guy who has, it's the guy who has the second most red zone targets in the NFL and the second most targets inside the 10 yard line in the NFL, T Y Hilton. Right. And we don't know if he's going to play. His value is going to be a little bit lower just because of that injury but four touchdowns in three games and not necessarily getting the deep targets uh indianapolis is running a lot more conservative offense um so i think he's a pretty obvious sell high the other guy you guys were talking really high on earlier is keenan allen that i almost wrote down hunter henry's been out mike williams has been banged up melvin gordon's eventually going to come back which i think will make them run a little bit more He's a guy who can definitely spl- uh, string together a lot of targets, but he's a guy that if you get a really good return on, he's not going to keep up what he's doing right now. It's just way too high. So he's another guy I would throw in here. Yeah, but what, like, okay, if I could get DeAndre Hopkins for him, and Hopkins has had a couple of bad games, right? I think Adams uh, is the guy you aim for. I don't think I would take yeah. Adams over over Allen, though. I think I'd take Allen. See, I would. I would. I think. I think Adams is. Uh, I think Allen is. Uh, is really good. I've always been a huge fan of him. Uh, but I do think he's just benefited so far from them having so many injuries and so many people out of the lineup, uh, including Melvin Gordon, who's not injured, is just holding out. But I do think that later in the year he's going to have a really hard time having 17 target games when they're back at full strength. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's for sure. Uh, all right. Let's go finally to our tight end sell highs. And Heath, who's your guy? I said Will Disley just because like the fever pitch for Will Disley against the Cardinals and what this matchup means has reached such heights. And it's like this was a tough exercise to have two different sell highs at the tight end position. Um, but yeah, I would if I could get Disley on waivers today and I already had a tight end, I'd absolutely try to add him and flip him for someone I actually want to have in my roster. I, would you would you trade Will Disley for OJ Howard? 
Yeah. By the way, you mentioned the movie. You mentioned Fever Pitch. I, you've probably seen Fever Pitch, Heath, right? It's probably one of your favorites. You probably saw it in theaters. I don't believe I've ever seen Fever Pitch. Okay, good. I you could. I don't think I I, I start the bidding at like two hundred dollars for me to watch that movie. Just watching like this crap movie about how great the Red Sox are. Two hundred dollars yeah, I mean, minimum for me to for me to watch it. I don't know. I've always kind of had a soft spot in my heart for the Red Sox just because of how much Yankees fans hate them. It's the same reason <laughs> that of... I like the Cubs. Um, oh, okay. So, yeah, it's fine. Because he hates the Cardinals. And Ben Hooper. Well, you don't, I know you don't get that reference, but he's your so high. <laughs> I don't. You're right. Uh, Austin <laughs> Hooper last year had a six-game stretch where he had like eight targets. or uh, I Don't quote me on this entirely. I was looking at his game log yesterday, but... Uh, I'm pretty sure it was eight plus targets in four of the six games. He had 10 plus in three of those six games. And then after that point, the rest of the season is about five or six games. He didn't go over six targets the rest of the year. The point I'm making there is Austin Hooper, Mohamed Sanu, Calvin Ridley, all these guys are behind Julio Jones at the end of the day. And, and that's just how Atlanta's offense works. Julio Jones will dominate the volume sometimes. And then it's just going to kind of fluctuate. There's going to be spike weeks for the other guys. If you if you monitor their targets week to week over the last couple of seasons, you'll see that it goes up and down. And so when Austin Hooper is is on the upside, and he had a two touchdown game last week, and he had seven targets, uh, and he had nine targets back in week one, that's when you sell him. That's when he, his value is too high. Uh, he's good. He's a very solid, fine, low end tight end one. But tight end's a thin enough position that. You know, if somebody will overpay for Austin Hooper, you let them overpay. He's not suddenly breaking out. He's still str- going to struggle for targets consistently in this offense. Delaney Walker or Austin Hooper? Delaney. Okay. OJ Howard or Austin Hooper? I'd, I'd still go with OJ Howard. All righty. All right. So those are your buy lows and your sell highs. Let me see if I can recap for you. The sell highs. Ben said Russell Wilson. Heath said Tom Brady. Ben said Mark Ingram. Heath said Philip Lindsay. Ben said T.Y. Hilton and Keenan Allen. Heath said Demarcus Robinson and McCall Hardman. And for tight end, Ben said Hooper. Hooper. And uh, Heath said Disley. And it's Jaws. You've never seen Jaws, Ben? I mean, I have when I was like five. I... Watch it again. It's an amazing movie. The buy lows. Ben said Goff. Heath said Wentz. Ben said buy low on Le'Veon Bell. Heath said Leonard Fournette. Ben said buy low on Devontae Adams. Heath said Robert Woods. Ben said buy low on Chris Herndon. And Heath said George Kittle. All right. All right. Listen, big game Thursday night. Philadelphia at Green Bay. We're going to talk about it, but I do have to tell you about SeatGeek. The promo code is FFT on SeatGeek. Save 10 bucks. All right, so let's say you're a Packers fan or you're an Eagles fan. And you want to buy some tickets. So you type in the game on SeatGeek. SeatGeek pulls in millions of tickets from all over the web. So you don't have to go searching other websites. You can do it all on SeatGeek. And then you find the tickets you want. They've got a color-coded map. You click on the seats. You kind of you can get a kind of a layout of the stadium. And the big green dots are the great values. They make it so easy to find the prices that fit your budget, to find the tickets that are being undervalued. Those are the ones that you want to buy, those great those great values on those big green dots. So you go on SeatGeek, you find your event. If it's comedy, if it's sports, if it's theater, whatever it is, if it's a concert, it's all there on SeatGeek. I use it all the time. I recommend it to all my friends and my family, and now we all use it, and I talk about SeatGeek a lot. So the promo code is FFT. Download the SeatGeek app for $10 off your first purchase. Use the promo code FFT. Again, that's promo code FFT for 10 bucks off your first SeatGeek purchase. So Philadelphia is at Green Bay. And Carson Wentz versus Aaron Rodgers. So, Heath, let, let's talk about the offense versus defense. It's time for our head and shoulders segment. We're looking at great offense. Are we looking at a great defense? The Packers so far, like I said at the top of the show, the second fewest points allowed in the NFL. The Eagles, they're ninth in scoring. They've played Washington, Atlanta, and Detroit. So who sort of wins this matchup, this offense versus defense matchup? Do you like the Packers defense or the Eagles offense? I think that the Packers defense will get the better of this matchup, but it's not that I think that they are necessarily better defensively than the Eagles. They just have a couple of other things in their favor. It's a short week. It's on a Thursday night. It's in, it's at Lambeau and Carson Wentz doesn't have Deshaun Jackson for this game. We don't know fully how healthy Alshon Jeffrey is. So there's just a couple, 
on a neutral field in a regular week, I might take Wentz against this matchup and just say he's probably going to be just good enough. But with all those other things in the Packers' favor, I'll take the deer defense. All right, so we look at the waiver wire quarterbacks. Daniel Jones, Kyle Allen, Case Keenum. Yeah, I'll start with you, Heath, then I'll go to Ben. How many of them are you starting over Carson Wentz? Okay, so Case Keenum for sure, Andy Dalton for sure, Daniel Jones for sure. Um, well, Jones what? is really, really close, and Brissett's right there as well. <laughs> All right, but Ben, how do you feel about Wentz? Because Wentz is 14th for Jamie, 12th for Dave, and 17th for Heath. Yeah, I, I would start none of those guys over Wentz. Uh, I, I mean, I don't love him, and I don't love Thursday night games either, but Thursday night games, there's that, that narrative that they're they're low scoring, and last year we're, we saw that kind of put to bed. There was a lot of really high-scoring Thursday night games. It's a short week for the defenses too, and it might even be tougher for the defense to rebound. Uh, I mean, they're, they're, they're I think probably the more physical side than like, a, like wide receivers, but um, they – the, what I expect out of this game is that we actually see the first kind of high scoring Thursday night game this year. And, and we have this small sample so far that we haven't really seen that yet. I think this is going to shoot out a little bit. I think Rogers is going to have to throw against Philadelphia a little bit. And that Wentz is going to be able to find uh, some room downfield against Green Bay. It's not great that Deshaun Jackson is out, but uh, Green Bay secondary got absolutely shredded by Minnesota, especially Stefan Diggs in week two. And Kirk Cousins just played terribly. Uh, they're, they're not like as good as their numbers to date. So I, I think Philadelphia can expose that. All right. Differ, differing takes there. And Heath, who do you like better, Wentz or Rodgers? I like Rodgers better than Wentz. I like Rodgers better than most of those streaming options as well. I'm starting Aaron Rodgers. You're starting him, but you have Keenum one spot ahead. Currently in the early projections, the numbers and the math said Keenum one spot ahead of Aaron Rodgers. It's going to be hard for me to stomach that on Thursday afternoon. Uh, there are sometimes some adjustments that are made by me, and I may just uh, make that adjustment. But Rodgers is a fine start. Are you guys starting any of the running backs in this game? Because, look, Green Bay's run defense has been terrible so far. Most of that was Dalvin Cook. But they are average, They are allowing more than five yards per carry to running backs. They did pretty well against the Bears running backs. Phil Lindsay scored two touchdowns, but he averaged 3.9 yards per carry. Royce Freeman averaged 4.2 yards per carry. Dalvin Cook is hurting those numbers. So I don't know how good their run defense actually is. But the Eagles' run defense, week after week, even with their defensive line injuries, has been really, really stout. You have somewhat of a timeshare there. So, Ben, are, are any of the running backs in this game comfortable starts for you? I would love to start Miles Sanders. I've talked about him for a few weeks. Uh, it's a little hard to... A lot of people pointed to the split in snaps last week for the Eagles and said, hey, this is becoming even more of a committee. It wasn't. Uh, Miles Sanders started again and played a ton through the middle of the second quarter. He had 10 carries and three targets by that point. He fumbled on a drive in the middle of the second quarter. They left him in the game. He fumbled again and lost it. Uh, this lost the second one on the same drive. And from that point, about the five minute mark of the second quarter, he didn't touch the ball again until about 11 minutes left in the fourth quarter. So he didn't touch the ball the entire third quarter. He, he basically got benched for a, a huge stretch after playing as their main back in the first quarter and a half of that game. Then he came back in. He had a couple touches late. He came back in when they were trailing and they needed some big plays. And he had like a 33 yard reception. Then he put up like 20 yards rushing on his three carries in the fourth quarter. He is their most explosive back, their best back. They want to use him. They went back to him in the fourth and he gave them big plays, what they were looking for when they did go back to him. Um, you know, Jordan Howard got the goal line touches. That was another negative thing for Miles Sanders. Uh, even before Sanders fumbles, Jordan Howard came in and got a one-yard touchdown run. And we just don't know how much those fumbles will impact. It, it might delay his breakout a little bit. But I'm still talking, like, still wanting to to talk about his uh, the, the fact that he's starting, the fact that he's playing as much as he is. The fumbles do delay that breakout a little bit. But they want him to be their lead back. But but you can you're not like. All of those things are fine for the long-term value, and if we were still in the buy low, sell high section. But if you're talking about, you can't start him on Thursday night, right? Like we're talking about a guy that's averaging 11, 12, no, 13 touches per game. Um, I have to and start just him got in one bench. Right. It's, I was just going to say that I'm in leagues where I, I have zero I have to. <laughs> right back yeah. leagues, and I have to consider him. Well, would you start Wayne Gallman or or Miles Sanders? Wayne Gallman. Probably Gallman. Yeah. Um, we start I, Adrian, Adrian Peterson or Miles Sanders? Miles Sanders. No question. Um, 
Yeah, there's definitely a question for me. Uh, it's very close. I'd probably start AP. I. What's AP's upside? Fifteen points. Well, the Giants are awful. Well, what's Miles Sanders' upside? Yeah, I mean, what's <laughs> his upside? I, well, is, okay. Is I mean, average, points Adrian Peterson is probably average averaging game. more yards per carry right now. Oof, I don't know. I just, I, I can't, I can't so take bad. the two down plotter on one of the worst teams in football. I mean, how's that going in Miami? Like, well, how's that well, going? Listen, for we gotta, plotter? we gotta go, we gotta go to the Packers because Aaron, uh, Aaron Jones, Dave is high on Aaron Jones. Heath and Jamie have him as like a number two guy. So Heath, let's finish off with the Packers. Aaron Jones, your thoughts on him, and then obviously everybody's starting Devonte Adams. What about Marquez Valdez Scantling? Yeah, I would like Jones is the only running back I would consider starting in this game, and I, you probably will start Aaron Jones. There are some guys like assuming Lashawn McCoy is practicing later this week. I think you start Lashawn McCoy over Aaron Jones. It's a bad situation with him wanting to split up touches, and if this game turns into a game with high passing volume for Aaron Rodgers, that's bad news for Aaron Jones most likely. Uh, but he's a low end number two running back that you probably end up starting. Marquez Valdez Scantling. More of a flex. It will be interesting to see against a matchup where Devontae Adams should not have any trouble getting open. Is this the situation where he finally goes back to dominating targets? Because so far, Valdez Scantling has more targets than Devontae Adams does on the season and has more production. I'll be interesting to see what see what the target split is there. I would start Valdez Scantling as a number three wide receiver, uh, but he's better as a flex. All right, I mean, look, this is a great matchup so far. Four wide receivers have had 100-yard games. Five wide receivers have caught a touchdown against the Eagles in only three games. So, I, I mean, I think there's room for both of these guys, Adams and MVS, to be good. Who knows? Maybe it'll be Geronimo Allison, but he hasn't done much other than the Minnesota game. He had four catches, 25 yards, and a touchdown. He's been he's been pretty useless. Um, uh, okay, who is the second-best wide receiver in this game behind Devontae Adams? Is it Aguilar? Is it Alshon? Is it MVS? I've got Alshon and Aguilar back, or Alshon and Marquez Valdez Scantling back to back at 32 right. and 33. Um, I guess I'd take Alshon, but I think there's more upside with MVS. So that I was going to lean MVS as well because we don't really know Aguilar, uh, Alshon's health. Are we sitting Nelson Aguilar? Oh, ben? yeah. I, I cut him in a couple of leagues. Thank you for wow. your service. I appreciate what you did for me last week. Um, <laughs> We're done. Okay. All right. Interesting. <laughs> and uh, I'm assuming we're not starting Jimmy Graham. You can't. Correct. Yeah. Packers DST. They're number. They're the number four DST in standard scoring leagues right now. You know, every league is different. Uh, the Eagles have allowed two big games in a row. The Packers are one of the top sacking teams in the NFL. The two Smiths that they signed in the offseason have been great for them. But Heath has him 14th. Dave and Jamie are a little higher on the Packers DST at eighth for for uh, Jamie and sixth for Dave, and that will be uh, that will be the end of our game preview. We got a lot more to come here on fantasy football today. So the uh, the video show is sort of ending, but we will continue now with the audio portion, which is going to have some fun stuff. Fantasy regulators, hopefully some fill in the blank. So stick around for that. And thank you for watching on video. So, fellas, we got about 10, 15 minutes to go, and uh, I'm going to give you the option. We're going to do an iTunes mailbag now. We're going to read questions from iTunes, but then after that, we can do one of two things. We can do fantasy regulators, or I have prepared fantasy Jeopardy. Which would you like to do? Well, Jeopardy is the clear choice. Yeah, that's a pretty obvious. All right, so we'll, we'll have to hold fantasy regulators until the mailbag show on Saturday. We'll do a bonus extended run of fantasy regulators. Let's do the mailbag. Drew from Philadelphia. I was offered James Conner for Tyler Lockett. I already have Hopkins, Juju, and Godwin. Is Conner a buy low for an offense that might want to run and check down more to James Conner? So would you give up Lockett when you're already solid at wide receiver for Conner? Yep. Yeah, I would. Although I do think that like these last two weeks have given me hope that Lockett may just be a top 10 wide receiver. He could be better than Conner the rest of the year. But it's a, an equal trade, right? Yeah, he he could definitely be better. But Connor also just played his highest snap share of the season, and we should be pretty optimistic about Connor. Jalen Samuels didn't touch the ball on offense in Week Three. I know is uh, Benny played, Snell the played, handcuff right now? 
No, Sam will still played about a quarter of the snaps and ran some routes, but he just didn't get a touch. I mean, All Connor right. is the guy still, and, and hopefully their offense is a little better. Next email is or, or iTunes comment is from Meathead7. I had Big Ben in a two-quarterback league. I picked up Mason Rudolph, and I grabbed Daniel Jones, and I have Russell Wilson. Should I sell high on Daniel Jones, or should I keep him? So it's a two-QB league. He has Rudolph, Jones, and Russell Wilson. What do you do? I keep all three, and I, I basically stream between Jones and Rudolph. Yep. Agreed. Uh, next one is from Dan from a field town in New Jersey. Should I trade Chris Carson and Juju Smith-Schuster? Carson and Juju for DeAndre Hopkins and O.J. Howard. I would. No. You wouldn't? I would not. I'm pretty down on Chris Carson. I'm fairly worried about Juju. I mean, Mason Rudolph did not play well. Right. And that one long touchdown catch, you know, can't rely on it. I it just, I'm also down on O.J. Howard. <laughs> I don't say right. so I, I, I can't Hopkins be at this point. Right, so I think Hopkins is the best... The, is the only guy you can really be optimistic about in this whole... I mean, he, I think he's a pretty big upgrade on Juju, and I was team Juju's on his, in his tier in the preseason. I think so. Heath and I are higher on Carson than you are, though. Yep, probably. I'm, I couldn't be lower on him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, from Antoine, how can you use your opponent's lineup to gain an edge for the week? Example, using McCole Hardman in your flex if you're facing Patrick Mahomes. I don't even consider it. Never consider it. Agreed. Never. In fact, I don't know if, uh, how many of you know this. I've said it before, but I never, ever, ever look at my matchups before the games start. Never. I don't want to know who right. I'm playing. I don't care. I just start who I like best. Uh, from Budwer, and also that that just takes away a lot of the stress on game day when I'm rooting for one guy, but I'm playing against him in another league. I just it drives me. Crazy. I do the same thing, but the worst is when you go <laughs> log in at the end of the day and you realize all the guys you crushed are on the other uh, are, are against you. You find it after the fact. You're like, oh cool, I played Keenan Allen this week. Oh cool, I played Mike Evans this week. Oh that's great. Yeah, yeah no, it can't be, but it's it's better than ruining your whole Sunday because you know you're getting crushed. Oh, I'm a scoreboard watcher. I'm, I I can't do it. Full on scoreboard it. watcher. From Budward, would you trade Juju and Derrick Henry for Mike Evans? Nope. Yeah, that's too much. Really? No. Nope. I, I mean, it's I like Evans, but I I don't think he's that much that far ahead of Juju. I'm not sure he's going to be better than Juju. Right, so you're just kind of giving up Derrick Henry, even if you have Evans as 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 valued as higher than Juju. It's not by a Derrick Henry margin. So to me, if we were drafting again today, it would be an easy choice for me to take Mike Evans over Juju. And you guys don't necessarily feel what, that way. What if we were drafting last Saturday or Sunday morning? Uh, no, I think Mason Rudolph was. Um, first of all, I'm not that influenced by the Giants' performance by Mike Evans. Like, I liked Mike. I called him a buy low on this show several times. Um, I liked Evans a lot going into the year, and the first two games didn't change that for me, and neither did the third. He is exactly what I think he is still, uh, as the, he was the number eight wide receiver for me, a mid-second round pick. Um, Juju is the one I'm worried about because Mason Rudolph was worse than I expected. That's my explanation. And yeah, it was his first road star. It's fine. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. At, I'm not that worried about Juju. You got to knock him down a little bit, but I'm not that worried. Like that, that's the thing with with Daniel Jones, with Kyle Allen, with Mason Rudolph. Like what we've seen is such a small sample size. We can you can start to like make observations, but we don't we don't know anything. <laughs> he wasn't even doing yep. that well with Ben Roethlisberger, though. I mean, let's let's like it hasn't been a good start to the year for Juju Smith Schuster. Yeah, but they're also benching John a, Tamon Creek. They yeah, but he has such a bad Vance arm. Hurt. They're trading for Nick Vanette. They need someone to catch passes. He doesn't have a great arm. So that's my concern is that he's not going to be able to push the ball downfield for Smith-Schuster. Juju right. is a low A dot underneath receiver. So. Yep. Uh, he, okay, he relies on big <laughs> plays, but they do come after the catch. All right, let's do some fantasy Jeopardy. We have three categories. We've got quarterbacks. We've got running backs. And we've got pass catchers. Pass really catchers. Really creative categories. Today. Yes. We have 200, 400, and 600 for each, uh, for each category. Just so you know, Ben, I have never once done this game without screwing something up. So be prepared I for that. I am so excited right now. All right. I just got to tell you, I'm, I'm like very excited. It's basically just trivia. But after we reveal each answer, um, give a quick fantasy take on the answer. All right. Here we go. Uh, ben, you're the you're the guest here, so the board is yours. 
quarterbacks, running backs, or pass catchers for two hundred, four hundred, or six hundred dollars? I'll take uh, pass catchers for four hundred, Adam. He is the number four wide receiver in PPR, despite not even being in the top thirty in wide receiver targets. Anyone? He uh, is the number one. Re- he's the number four wide receiver in PPR. Do, wait, despite do not, we lose points for getting no, wrong answers? Uh, no, no. I have guesses. Uh, well, you have to. We, some, you have to Go say ahead, your. Dude. You have to say your name to buzz in. We don't lose points. Okay, Go, Ben. Go ahead. Uh, number four, I'll say Demarcus Robinson. Ben, uh, Heath, you have a guess. Heath. <laughs> yeah. Um, who is Amari Cooper? Ah, uh, not even a top thirty in targets. Hmm. Number four wide receiver. Quick fantasy analysis, Heath. Great start to the game. Um, Amari Cooper is going to be very good this year with Dak Prescott. I love their new offense, and I'm in on the Cowboys passing game. It's bad news for Zeke. He's not getting as many targets. Ben, the uh, board is yours. Uh, We'll do pass catchers for 600. We're still good on that one. Let's go harder. Let's go harder. (laughs) He leads the NFL in red zone (laughs) targets and trails only Larry Fitzgerald in targets inside the 10-yard line. Ben. Ben. Who was T.Y. Hilton? You said it earlier in the show. No, I think I said he was uh, second. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so you were wrong. Be- uh, uh, Heath, he leads the NFL in red zone targets and trails only Larry Fitzgerald in targets inside the 10-yard line. Heath. Yeah. Who is George Kittle? Who is Emmanuel Sanders? Emmanuel Sanders. Ooh. Okay. How do you feel about that, Ben? Quick reaction. I mean, I'm still having a hard time buying in on him, uh, but he's definitely looked fine. It's just not a great passing game, and I'm worried that he'll stay healthy all year. All right, Ben, the board is yours. Quarterbacks, running backs, or pass catchers? Let's just close out pass catchers for 200. (laughs) Only Travis Kelsey has more receiving yards than this tight end. Ben. Yeah? Darren Waller. Ah. Heath, only Travis Kelsey has more receiving yards than this tight end. Heath. Mm-hmm. Mark Andrews. Yeah. <laughs> oh! <laughs> We're doing terrible. Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram. Yeah. Of course. Evan Ingram. No analysis needed. All right. Ben, the board is still yours. Quarterbacks <laughs> or running backs? Right, we'll do running games for 200. Let's find something. Running backs for 200. Through three games, he leads all running backs in receptions while averaging less than three yards per carry. Ben. Ben. Lady on Bell? <laughs> Heath? What? Through three games, he leads all running backs in receptions while averaging less than three yards per carry. I don't think... like Levy on Bell leads all running backs in receptions. What's your answer? Heath. Yes, Heath. David Johnson. Who is Levy on Bell? Who is you have to? It, we are playing Jeopardy, Ben. You have to phrase it in the form of oh a question. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, zero zero. Zero zero. Le'Veon Bell is the answer, though. Buy low on Le'Veon Bell. Uh, ben, the board is yours. Yeah, four hundred running backs. You are running the board here. Philip Lindsay has five of these. Royce Freeman has zero. Ben, what are inside the five rush attempts? Oh. Boom! Ben Gretsch is on the board, and that is actually my favorite stat of the day. Philip Lindsay, five carries inside the five-yard line. Royce Freeman, zero. Yeah, I, it doesn't make any sense to me. Royce Freeman weighs in 50 pounds heavier. Yeah, and he's slower, so he can't, you know. By not much. He's actually more agile. He graded out with a qu- better agility scores at almost 50 pounds heavier. Oh, he look at he had a touchdown called back by a penalty this week, Freeman, after I told you he was a buy low, about an 18-yard yeah. run, I think it was, yeah, or maybe played, it was like 22 yards. It was nice. Longer run. He's breaking and, off big runs. Yeah, I mean, he looks good still. And they, they both got five targets again. We talked about last week how Joe Flacco's throwing a ton to the running backs. And they're not using a third passing down back. I still think Royce Freeman's definitely a buy. But, yeah, it's disheartening that uh, Lindsey's getting all the close work. All right, Ben, you're up 400 to nothing, and the board is yours. Go 600 for running back. The answer there is your daily double, which I think you can actually wager up to 600 on this. 
Um, well, and, if we can't go negative, I might as well. Just no, 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 no. On, da- on the Daily Double, you can. So you better be careful here. I will wager um, $300. All right. And I got. I guess I got to be fair here. No, you know what? You, no negatives. No negatives. It's not fair. No. What are no you negatives. About? That's not fair to Ben. That's not fair to Ben. That, that means that getting the daily double is actually a bad thing because you're at well, such no, a No, because then I could just wager a ton. That's not good. No, you if can you wager. If you can't go negative, you can, then you can't wager more than would put you in the negative. All right, fine. Then you can wager up to $400, but no negatives. I'm going to wager 300 of my 400 Okay, that doesn't make sense. So he sense. has to get at least two right in the last category if I get this. I'll be up to 700 These top three running backs in PPR – are separated by just two fantasy points. These top three running backs? Yeah. Are separated. Who are yeah. Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara, and why can't I think of the third one? It doesn't matter. You got it wrong. Oh. Who are Dalvin Cook, Christian McCaffrey, and Austin Eckler? Oh. I don't get a chance to try to steal No, it? not in the Daily Dome. Dalvin Cook. How did I not? Yeah, that's hard. It's no, no, it's, it, it's not I easy. I told you I didn't sleep well last night. It's not easy when you're not looking. Uh, Dal- uh, you, what you should do is pull up a list of teams. That helps. Dalvin Cook, Christian McCaffrey, Austin Eckler, top three in PPR. All right. I uh, smashed this week, so I thought maybe he got up there, but obviously I should have got Cook and Eckler. That's terrible. Ben, you're you're up 400 to nothing. Quarterbacks. No, 100. I lost. 100. What are you talking about? I just, you just said you don't lose money on the daily double. I just said that. You don't that. lose money? No. I, what's the point? You're not wagering. That's then. nonsense. You just get to choose whatever. Yeah. <laughs> no. You I, get. Uh, okay. He will keep score. I, I'm at 100 here. Wait a second. Zero. All right. Why, uh, why would you lose money on only the daily double? What I'm saying is that means it's bad to get the daily double. You're putting yourself because at you're picking at, your wager amount. That's why. But you're you risking can all, amount. But you picked, you picked a wager that was less than what it was worth on the board. So, like, it didn't really hit. Fine, fine. You know what? I don't care. You dig your own grave. <laughs> 100 to nothing. You're really bad at this, Adam. Quarterbacks for two, right. four, or six. Quarterbacks for two. He's, uh, okay. He set an NFL record for highest passer rating through the first three games of a career. Ben. Ben. Who was Kyler Murray? He set an NFL record for highest passer rating through the first three games of a career. Heath, anything? Who is Gardner Minshew? Gardner wow. Minshew. Did he already play three games? Yeah, he played. Well, two, two and three quarters. We'll see where he's at yeah. after his next quarter. It's three games. It's the stat. <laughs> All right, let's go 400 here. Actually, Ben, I'll let you choose. Four or six? Yeah, 400. Uh, these two quarterbacks are the only ones with more than four interceptions through three games. You said quarterbacks, right? Yeah, like these, passers? Two, these two quarterbacks are the only ones with more than four interceptions through three games. They've thrown more than four picks. I know one. Anyone here? Buzz it in? Ben. Ben. Who are Baker, Mayfield, and... I don't know the other one. Heath. I'm I only knew one of them as well, but yep. it wasn't the one that he <laughs> knew. So who are Matt Ryan and Baker Mayfield? Correct. Way to go. All right. So that means it's it should be four hundred to four hundred, but because Ben took points away from himself for no reason, it's four hundred to one hundred, which means this is for the game, Heath, for six hundred dollars. Uh both of you, I guess I was saying Heath had the board, but there's only one left. Here we go. Quarterbacks for 600. Only Kyler Murray has thrown more passes than this veteran signal caller. Heath. Heath. Hmm. Who is Case Keenum? No, he's third. I don't know who's second, though. Uh, I do know who's second now. Ben, you have five seconds to win All the right. game. I'm going to say it after Ben doesn't get it. Okay. Five, four, three. Who is Russell Wilson? Heath, who is it? Who is Andy Dalton? Correct. And I, you know what? Like, honestly, I'm running the show. You guys tied. There is no reason why you should have (laughs) lost money on the Daily Double when you don't lose money on any of the other. It's funny. You do mess up every time we do this show, but oddly, you mess up in the favor of whoever I'm facing every time we play this (laughs) game. The only time I've actually won this game was the time that I ran the board and shut Jamie out. 
and you couldn't find a way <laughs> to fix the rules to give Jamie the victory. You are a terrible game show host. I am not disputing that, but in this case, I am right and you guys are wrong. I made it clear you don't lose money for for getting the daily double wrong. I it, quit. It, no, you no, don't, don't quit. It's a tie. <laughs> you guys both win. Everybody wins. I want to thank Heath and I want to thank Ben. I want to thank our listeners for tuning in. This has been Fantasy Football Today. We'll come back tomorrow and preview the AFC home game. See you later, everybody.